What secrets lie buried beneath the sea, in the drowned valleys and forgotten landscapes of the Ice Age world? In the murky depths of Southeast Asia's waters, two extraordinary finds, one from the seabed of the Madura Strait in Indonesia and the other dredged from the Taiwan Strait, are rewriting our understanding of human evolution. These fossil discoveries both retrieved not from archaeological digs, but from dredging and fishing operations, bridge lost worlds and challenge what we thought we knew about ancient hominins like Homo erectus and Denisovans. In this article, we'll explore how these submerged finds connect to broader evolutionary questions, and how the story of one ancient river valley, the Solo, may link them. In the ever-evolving narrative of human ancestry, these recent discoveries from the depths of Southeast Asia's waters have illuminated previously uncharted chapters. Two significant finds, the 140,000-year-old Homo erectus bones from Indonesia's submerged Madura Strait and the Denisovan jawbone dredged off Taiwan's coast and also dated to around 140,000 years, offer profound insights into the distribution, adaptability and interactions of ancient hominin species. The Java Homo erectus bones include two small skull fragments, although the species designation is debated, with many believing them to represent a southern population of what we call Denisovans, while in China they are called Dragon Man. But let's just call them Homo erectus to be consistent with the new study from Java. Ten years ago, during sand extraction for a land reclamation project along the coast of Grisik in eastern Java, Dredgers stumbled upon something extraordinary, over 6,000 fossil fragments from an ancient, now-drowned valley beneath the Madura Strait. Among these bones were fragments of Homo erectus skulls, undeniable traces of one of our evolutionary ancestors. This wasn't just another fossil site. It was the first hominin locality discovered on the submerged lands of the Sunda Shelf lands that during Ice Age glacial periods were dry and connected the islands of Java, Sumatra and Borneo to mainland Southeast Asia. This drowned region, known as Sundaland, had been a crucial migratory route for animals and early humans. But until this discovery, its underwater fossil record remained entirely unknown. The Madura Strait fossils were preserved in marine sandstones and conglomerates that once filled a wide river valley, the ancient lower reaches of the Solo River. This river, known today for its fossil-rich banks in central Java at sites like Ngandong and Trinil, once carved its way eastward across exposed shelf lands during glacial low stands. The valley was first incised around 140,000 years ago, during marine isotope stage 6, when sea levels were dramatically lower. As the climate warmed and sea levels rose into marine isotope stage 5, the valley filled with estuarine and then fully marine sediments, preserving the bones of turtles, elephants, buffalo, and hominins. Dating of fluvial sandstones from the site yielded ages between 162,000 and 119,000 years ago, tightly bracketing the fossils within the late Middle Pleistocene. These are not reworked bones from older sediments. The stratigraphic sequence is well preserved. Fluvial channels overlaid by estuarine gravels and shell-rich sands capped by marine clays. The Homo erectus individuals who died here likely lived along the riverbanks of Sunderland's vast lowland plains during the last major glacial low stand before the current interglacial era, according to the study. This find is striking not only for its location, but for its timing. The fossil's age overlaps with the famous Ngandong Homo erectus site farther inland along the Solo River Valley. Ngandong has long been debated as one of the youngest Homo erectus sites in the world, with cranial remains dating between 140,000 and 90,000 years ago. The Madura Strait fossils, resting within the same river system and of the same geological age, strengthen the case that Homo erectus, or a Homo erectus-like thing, survived on Java longer than anywhere else on Earth. But survival at the edge of the world wasn't without cost. These late Javanese Homo erectus were physically robust, with thick skulls and powerful jaws, but they may have been cut off from broader evolutionary changes sweeping across Eurasia. 
As Neanderthals thrived in Europe and Denisovans adapted to the highlands of Asia, Homo erectus in Java persisted in isolation, holding on in shrinking ecological niches until they finally vanished, perhaps not long before modern humans arrived. The discovery in the Madura Strait hints at an ecological richness that allowed Homo erectus to persist longer than in mainland Asia, but it also suggests a fragility. Sea level rise eventually drowned the valley and its habitats, and climate shifts may have sealed the fate of these ancient people. In a way, the sea took them, preserving their bones in sediment, but washing away the landscapes in which they lived. Previously, Taiwanese fishermen brought up a strange fossil from the seafloor of the Penghu Channel, a heavy, wide human mandible with unusually large molars and thickened bone. For years, scientists puzzled over it. It resembled neither modern Homo sapiens nor known Chinese Homo erectus, and yet it didn't fit neatly into the Neanderthal story either. Then, using cutting-edge proteomic techniques, Researchers identified the Penghu one jawbone as belonging to the mysterious Denisovans, an archaic human group first discovered in the cold caves of Siberia. The Denisovans are known primarily from DNA, a finger bone, a few teeth, and a jaw from the highlands of Tibet. But their genetic legacy lives on, especially in the peoples of islands Southeast Asia and Oceania, where Denisovan DNA contributes up to 5% of modern genomes. The Taiwan jaw, now confidently assigned to a Denisovan individual, expands the known range of this enigmatic species. It shows that Denisovans occupied coastal East Asia and likely navigated the vast Sunderland region, just as Homo erectus did. The presence of Denisovans so close to the Philippines and Borneo raises the possibility of overlap, contact, or even conflict with Homo erectus populations like those in Java. Could the Denisovans have outcompeted Homo erectus in mainland Asia and eventually crossed into the islands? Did they sail across narrow straits or walk during times of lower sea levels, following herds and shorelines? The fact that the Penghu jaw was dredged from a submerged channel suggests it too came from a drowned Ice Age landscape, another piece of the puzzle lost to rising seas. Both the Madura Strait and the Penghu Channel finds point to a broader reality. The fossil record of human evolution is incomplete, not because fossils are missing, but because they are underwater. During glacial periods, sea levels were up to 120 meters, around 300 feet, lower than today, exposing vast plains and creating land bridges between islands. Humans and animals moved freely across these submerged landscapes. When the glaciers melted, the seas rose, drowning river valleys, forests, and entire ecosystems. Today, the fossil evidence of these migrations lies beneath the waves, preserved in estuarine gravels, hidden in sandbars, or caught in the drag lines of dredging vessels. This raises the possibility that much of the critical story of human evolution in Southeast Asia lies offshore. The Sunda Shelf, which once linked China and Indochina to Java and Borneo, may hold key sites for understanding how Homo erectus, Denisovans, and early Homo sapiens spread across the region. The Homo erectus remains unearthed from the seafloor of the Madura Strait signify more than just ancient bones. They represent a glimpse into a once thriving ecosystem now hidden beneath the waves. These fossils, part of a collection exceeding 6,000 specimens, were retrieved during a construction project and have since reshaped our understanding of Homo erectus's geographical reach and behavioural patterns. During the Pleistocene epoch, lower sea levels exposed vast plains known as Sunderland, connecting present-day islands like Java to the Asian mainland. This land was a mosaic of rivers and fertile grounds, teeming with diverse fauna, including turtles, river sharks, and large mammals like elephants and water buffalo. The Homo erectus population in this region capitalized on these resources, as evidenced by cut marks on turtle shells and selective hunting of prime-aged bovids. Such strategic hunting behaviors suggest a level of sophistication previously unattributed to Homo erectus in this locale. Parallel to the Indonesian discovery, the Penghu One jawbone retrieved from the seafloor near Taiwan has shed light on the elusive Denisovans. 
Initially, the jawbones classification was debated, with hypotheses ranging from Homo erectus to archaic Homo sapiens. However, advanced protein analysis techniques have conclusively identified it as Denisovan, marking a significant expansion of the known Denisovan range. The Penghu-1 specimen, characterized by its robust structure and large teeth, aligns with other Denisovan fossils, such as the Xiahe mandible from Tibet. These similarities underscore the Denisovan's adaptability to diverse environments from high-altitude plateaus to coastal regions. The presence of Denisovans in Taiwan suggests they traversed vast territories across Asia, interacting with various ecosystems and possibly other hominin species. The geographical proximity and overlapping timelines of Homo erectus and Denisovans in Southeast Asia raise compelling questions about their interactions. Did these species coexist peacefully, compete for resources, or even interbreed? While definitive answers remain elusive, Genetic studies have revealed Denisovan DNA in modern human populations, particularly in Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians, indicating past interbreeding events. The possibility of Homo erectus and Denisovans sharing habitats or encountering each other adds complexity to our understanding of human evolution. It suggests a dynamic landscape where multiple Homo erectus-like species navigated survival, adaptation, and potential interaction. These underwater discoveries challenge traditional narratives of human evolution, emphasizing the importance of Southeast Asia as a significant region in our ancestral history. They highlight the need to explore submerged landscapes, which may harbor untapped fossil records due to historical sea level changes. Furthermore, the application of cutting-edge technologies, such as protein analysis, has revolutionized the identification and classification of ancient remains, enabling scientists to piece together the intricate puzzle of human ancestry with greater precision. The submerged fossils of Homo erectus and Denisovans serve as poignant reminders of the vast interconnected web of human evolution. They beckon us to delve deeper, both literally and figuratively, into the oceans of our past where countless stories await discovery. As we continue to unearth these ancient narratives, we not only enrich our understanding of human history, but also gain insights into the resilience, adaptability, and diversity that have shaped our species. Marine geologists and archaeologists are now turning their attention to submerged valleys, drowned riverbeds, and estuarine deltas, using seismic imaging and sediment coring to find where ancient peoples once lived. The Madura Strait and Penghu Jaw discoveries taken together paint a picture of Southeast Asia as a hominin crossroads. Here, Homo erectus endured in the lowland river valleys of Java, perhaps developing local adaptations and diverging from their mainland cousins. Here too, Denisovans expanded into coastal East Asia, possibly following marine routes and shoreline habitats. And later, modern humans, Homo sapiens, arrived bringing new tools, language, and genes. The boundaries between these groups may not have been clear-cut. Recent genetic studies suggest interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Denisovans was frequent in this region. Some have even speculated that Denisovans interbred with a local ghost population, possibly the last remnants of Homo erectus in the region. If so, the bones from the Madura Strait and the jaw from Taiwan are not just separate fossils, they may be relatives connected by blood, by migration, and by shared landscapes now hidden by the sea. The Madura Strait Homo erectus fossils and the Penghu Denisovan jaw remind us that the story of our evolution is far from finished. These fossils, recovered not from caves or dry riverbeds, but from the depths of drowned lands, are whispers from a world we've only begun to rediscover. As technology advances and our understanding of submerged landscapes grows, we may yet uncover more of these forgotten chapters. Sunderland, once a great savanna connecting Asia's corners, now lies beneath the waves, its secrets held in sediment and stone. But the fossils are speaking, and they are telling us that our ancestors were not just survivors of land, but navigators of water, adapters to change, and witnesses to the Earth's great fluctuations. To understand who we are, we must look not only to the mountains and deserts, but also to the drowned valleys and forgotten shores. 
for it is there beneath the sea that some of the oldest pieces of ourselves still wait to be found. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe and check out our other videos.